Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to knit the Brava Stripe Afghan. So the first thing you'll need for this project is the free written pattern, which you can check out at the first link in the video description down below, or you can grab the PDF version of this pattern at the second link in the description box down below. So if you haven't guessed yet, this afghan is getting its name from the yarn that I'm using here. This yarn is called Brava Stripe. This is from Knit Picks, and this is a worsted weight yarn that is a self-striping acrylic. Now, I love Knit Picks Brava. It is one of my favorite acrylic yarns when I do use acrylic. In fact, I think the first yarn review I ever did on this channel, one of the very first ones was for Knit Picks Brava, and that was many years ago. I have used dozens of skeins of this stuff. It is one of the best quality worsted weight acrylic yarns that you can get. Comes in a ton of colors, and I really love using it. So when they came out with a striping version, I was really excited to give this a try except there's one problem here. And the problem is that I personally don't love self-striping yarns. Believe it or not, when yarns give a solid stripe where there's like a distinct line between the stripes, I kind of don't love that so much because I really like clean stripes if I'm going to make a project with stripes. And with a self-striping yarn, you have no control over where the stripe is going to break and if it's gonna start a new stripe in the middle of your row. So that is the one thing I don't love about self-striping yarns, but the way that everything is worked out in this pattern, this particular yarn's stripes will be kind of mixed around a little bit so that there are no distinct stripes. Yes, there will be distinction between the colors, but they will not be intended to be even straight stripes. So this is a very beginner friendly project and you can technically use any kind of yarn you want and follow this pattern. But if you want the self-striping look, if you want the kind of stripes that we're adding here, then you want to stick with this exact yarn because I cannot guarantee that any other brand of self-striping yarn is going to have the same length per stripe as this one. So this is kind of going to be more of a streaky colored look rather than a clean stripe look, which is what I would prefer when I deal with a self-striping yarn. So I have five colors here that I'm going to be using, and you can use all 10 colors of this yarn if you wanted to. You can use two colors if you wanted to. Technically, you could even just use one color and it would still turn out really neat, but I'm using five different colors here and you will need 10 skeins total. So I have two skeins of each one of these colors. This one is called Twilight. This one is Candy Jar. This green one is called Laguna. This kind of golden yellow here is Buttercream. And this purple one is called Orchid. So this is kind of the color order that I've got going on here. And you will need 10 skeins total. So whatever combination you choose, you can mix it up, you can use fewer colors, and it doesn't really matter as long as you have at least 10 skeins. And you will also need a knitting needle. Now, this is a circular knitting needle. You will need a circular knitting needle for this project, and it should be at least bare minimum 24 inches long, but better yet, at least 36 inches long because you don't want to have to squeeze all those stitches on a length of needle that is too short or that it would be very hard for all of those stitches to scrunch together. So I would recommend at least a 36 inch long needle for this project. And this is a size seven, 4.5 millimeter knitting needle. You will also need some scissors, a measuring tape or a ruler to measure your gauge, although a measuring tape is better because you will also need to measure the finished size of the blanket and some yarn needles or a yarn needle or a blunt tapestry needle for weaving in your ends. However, we're going to minimize weaving in ends as much as possible. So we're going to be using a specific yarn joining technique here where that we do not have to weave in any yarn tails later. I love that. And it will also help minimize any kind of jog or weird, you know, blotchy look in our color changes when we switch from one color to the next. So let's get started with the knitting. All right, so we're going to start out with the twilight colorway. Like I said, if you are choosing your own color combination here, 
then you can use whichever color you want first. It doesn't really matter. But whichever color you're going to use first, we're going to start with that one. So let's begin with our long tail cast on. And one thing, if you've ever done a long tail cast on before with a lot of stitches, is that you have to leave a tail long enough to accommodate all the stitches you're going to be working with but you also don't want to leave a tail so excessively long that we end up wasting part of the yarn tail. So for this project, for the number of stitches we're going to be doing, you're going to need to leave a tail at least four yards long for your long tail cast on. So right here is about four yards. I'm going to give it a few extra inches just for good measure. And then we're going to make our slip knot, like so and put the slip knot on the yarn needle. Now if you wanted to use a different cast on, you totally could, but this one is just fairly simple and one that most people know. So if you are familiar with some other cast on techniques and you want to try something different, go for it. You just need a basic simple cast on here. So we're going to go ahead and cast on 240 stitches. All right, so I have cast on my 240 stitches. And now we're ready to begin with the knitting. So we're going to start out with two rows of just plain knit stitch. And that will give us a little bit of a border, a decorative border. It also has some function too. So for rows one and two, I am just going to knit every stitch across. All right, so I've finished rows one and two, and now we're ready to start working on our stitch pattern. So this stitch pattern is called half linen stitch, and it is fairly simple, but it gives a lovely woven look. And when we mix that with our stripes, it's gonna look really cool. So what we're going to do is we are going to be alternating, working between two colorways at a time. So I have my twilight here, and then we're going to start working some of our rows in candy jar, which is the pink colorway. So I'm going to go ahead and add our candy jar colorway, which is color B. We're calling this color B for right now. And we're going to start row three. So I am going to leave a tail of my color B yarn and start working with it as if it were my working yarn. And what we're going to do is to begin our row, we're going to knit two like so so we're going to have a very narrow garter stitch border extending up the sides of our blanket and then we're going to repeat a very brief stitch pattern all the way across the row and that stitch pattern is to slip one with yarn in front and knit one so to slip one with yarn in front means we're going to bring our working yarn to the front of the work and we're going to slip the next stitch on the needle from the left needle to the right needle without doing anything to it. We're just inserting our right needle as if to purl into the next stitch and then slipping it over to our right needle. But by holding the yarn to the front, we're making a little bitty bump of our working yarn on the front of the work. So that's the slip one with yarn in front. Then I'm gonna bring the yarn to the back and knit one. So I'm going to do that all the way across. I'm going to bring the yarn to the front, slip one with yarn in front, bring the yarn to the back again, and knit one. So we're going to slip one with yarn in front, knit one, slip one with yarn in front, knit one, all the way across. And you can already see how that where we slip with the yarn in front, there's a little bump of that pink yarn in front of those stitches. So again, slip one with yarn in front, knit one, slip one with yarn in front, knit one, all the way across. And every time we do that slip one, we're not working the stitch. We're just picking it up with our right needle. We're holding the yarn to the front of the work, picking the stitch up with our right needle, and just moving it over. We're not knitting it, we're not purling it, we're just moving it. That's called a slip. So we are going to slip the stitch with the yarn in front, and then we take our yarn back to the back again for the knit one. So I'm going to do that slip one with yarn in front, knit one, repeat all the way until I have two stitches left in my row. All right, so I'm down to my last repeat of slip one with yarn in front, knit one. I have two stitches left in my row, 
and I'm going to go ahead and knit those last two stitches. So that's row three. Now we're going to work row four. And for row four, we're going to knit the first two stitches, which is our little garter stitch border. And then we're going to purl each stitch across until we have two stitches left in the row. All right, so I'm down to the last two stitches of my row, and I'm gonna knit those two stitches. And you can see that where my yarn tail is, where I joined this colorway, the loop is kind of stretched out. And what I like to do in that case, when I'm joining a new skein of yarn at the edge of the work, I don't wanna pull too tight, but I don't wanna like leave a big loop either. So I'm going to just tie the yarn tail of the new yarn with the working yarn that was the other color and just secure that that way. So that is the end of row four. And you can kind of see the beginning of our stitch pattern here. Now we're going to switch back to color A, which is our twilight here. And we're going to work the next two rows of our stitch pattern. So for row five, we're going to start by knitting the first two stitches. That's our little border. And then we're going to do the opposite repeat of what we did with the candy jar colorway. So instead of slip one with yarn in front, knit one, we're going to do that the other way around and then knit one, slip one with yarn in front. Knit one, slip one with yarn in front. All the way across. And what this does is it puts the little bumps on the front, the little floats of the blue yarn opposite, alternating where the floats of pink yarn were on the previous stripe. So I'm going to continue to slip one with yarn in front, knit one, slip one with yarn in front, knit one, all the way across until I have two stitches left in my row. Alright, so I'm down to the last two stitches and I'm going to knit those last two stitches. And then I'm going to turn the work again and work row six, which is exactly like row four. We're going to knit two, purl each stitch across until we have two stitches left, and then we're going to knit the last two stitches of the row. All right, so I finished row six in color A, which is currently twilight, and now we're going to repeat rows three to six a bunch more times. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be alternating back and forth, working rows three and four in color B. Oh, here's the working yarn, that's the tail. So we're going to work rows three and four in color B and then switch to color A for five and six. And we're going to continue repeating rows three to six, basically until we have used up about half, almost half the skein of our twilight color. So I'm going to continue repeating rows three to six, however many times the pattern specifies. And at that point, we will have used up almost half the skein of twilight, and we will be ready to join our next color to where our twilight yarn was. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat those rows, and then I'll show you what we're going to do next. All right, so now I have worked through about half the skein of twilight, and I have repeated rows three to six seven more times after the first time that I've worked it. So as long as you're matching the pattern gauge, you don't need to worry about measuring how much of the skein you have left. But if you are doing this at your own gauge or making a different size blanket, then you'll want to stop when you have weighed the first skein of Twilight with a gram scale and you have half of the skein or slightly more than half left. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our color A, which is Twilight, and we're gonna to switch to a new color for color A. So I'm gonna leave a tail at least 16 inches long and cut the yarn. And then we're going to grab the next color, which for this instance is Laguna. And we're going to do something called the Russian joint. And this is a way of joining two skeins of yarn without having any ends to weave in, but also in a way where you don't see anything on the back of the fabric. So this is a great way to join two skeins of yarn when you're changing colors. The color change will not actually fall at the very edge of the row, but that is just the nature of what we're doing here anyway because the stripes break 
at various points in the row, and that's why we're using this half linen stitch to disguise or kind of blend together the places where the stripes break so it's not as obvious. And I really love this woven look that we're getting here. So I do have a separate video on how to do the Russian join, but I'm gonna demonstrate it here as well. So basically what we're going to do is we're gonna take the two yarn tails. This is our color A yarn that we already had. We've cut it. Now we're going to join a new skein for color A, and Laguna is now going to be our color A. So what I have here is I have kind of crossed these over each other, and then I'm going to cross them over each other again so that we basically have two yarns hooking together like this. So here I have the yarn tail folded over at least six inches. You want a minimum of six inches here just for security so that it doesn't wiggle out. And then we're gonna grab a yarn needle. I like to use one of the thinner ones for this, but whatever you have will work as long as it is a little bit thinner than the yarn you're using. I'm gonna thread my yarn tail through. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to thread our yarn tail into the center of the strand of yarn. So if I pick this up right here where you can see it more closely, I'm going to slip my yarn needle in between the plies of the yarn, kind of going up the center of the strand where that it will kind of slip into the inside of the strand of yarn. And you can kind of see how that helps it disappear. And I'm gonna continue slipping my needle through these strands of yarn until I end up getting to the end of my yarn tail, which should be at least six inches long. So as I slide this through, you can see how it is now further encased in the strand of yarn, our working yarn. And I'm gonna continue until I've used up the yarn tail. All right, I'm almost to the end, but I wanna make sure I get that end all the way in. So I'm gonna keep going. And I like to thread it through a little bit further than what's actually needed just to make sure that little end gets encased in the other strand of yarn. All right. So, now that we have stretched that back out, you can see how that although this section of yarn is a little bit thicker, it's smooth and the transition um, where the tail is blends in pretty well. So we will just go ahead and knit with this yarn as is. I'm gonna do the same thing to secure the other yarn tail. So I'm gonna leave at least six inches and then thread this one through this strand of working yarn as well. All right, so now I've stretched that one out as well and smoothed it out. You can again see how that this section is a little bit thicker, but it is encasing that yarn tail so that we don't see it and it won't pop out. So basically what we're going to do is go ahead and knit with this working yarn as we work the next row that calls for it, and it will just transition over into our new skein. So from this point on, the pattern is going to tell you to continue working in our stitch pattern, which is rows three to six, and we're going to be continually repeating those rows. But each time we get to the end of a skein, the pattern is going to tell you which colorway to join to that skein next. So as we go along here, as I go ahead and start knitting the next row, my color A, which is Twilight, is going to transition to Laguna because I've just joined that. And then I'm going to continue knitting with Laguna as color A and Candy Jar as color B until I run out of Candy Jar, which is currently my color B. And then I'm going to join the next color that the pattern specifies to the end of this skein, which will be my new color B and continue repeating rows three to six, 
changing colors whenever we reach the end of the skein as the pattern specifies. So just follow the written instructions and they will tell you which color to join next each time you get to the end of a skein. So I'm going to continue and basically knit through the rest of the blanket since all the remaining rows except the very last few rows are the same as what we've already done. So I'm going to continue repeating rows three to six, changing skeins or changing colors when the pattern specifies as I reach the end of each skein and then I will show you what to do next. All right, so I have knit through most of my yarn and I love how this has turned out so far with the way that all of these colors have blended together in such interesting combinations. And now basically what has happened here is I have made it almost to the end of my last blue yarn, the Twilight. This is all I have left. You don't have to go until this is all you have left, but basically you want to go until you don't think you have enough left in your skein to do another two rows. So this is my Twilight yarn. It is basically done. I have some orchid left, and what we're going to do is put a little bit of a plain border on the very edge here to finish off our afghan. So for the last two rows of this blanket, I am going to just knit every stitch across for both of these rows. So I'm going to knit all the way across for one row, and then turn and knit all the way back across for the second row, and then we're going to bind off. All right, so I've done two rows of just knit stitches, and now we're ready to go ahead and bind off. Now you can bind off however you like, but I recommend for this project the suspended bind off, which is basically a regular bind off, except it uses an extra motion that helps to keep the bind off stitches from getting too tight so they can stretch better than a regular bind off. So if you want to learn more about this technique, I have an entire video on the suspended bind off. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to knit the first two stitches. And then normally we would pass the first stitch over the second one and off the tip of the needle. But for the suspended bind off, what we're going to do is we're going to pick up that first stitch, pass it over the second one off the tip of the right needle, but we're not going to drop it off the tip of the left needle yet. So with that stitch still on the tip of the left needle, we're going to come over here to the next stitch on the left needle, knit through that, and then let both the stitch that we were holding and the stitch we just knit through fall off of the left needle at the same time. So again, we're going to pick up the first stitch on the needle, lift it over and off, over the second stitch on the needle and off the tip of the right needle, but we're going to leave it on the tip of the left needle for the moment. Then we're going to come over here and insert our right needle into the next stitch on the left needle, knit through that stitch, now I have two stitches on my right needle, and I have the held stitch and the stitch we just knit through on the left needle. I'm going to slide both of those off at the same time. So the edge that this produces is exactly the same as a regular standard bind off, but it helps to keep the stitches elongated so that they don't end up being too tight, which is a pretty common problem that most people have with the regular bind off. So one more time, I'm going to pass the first stitch over the second one without dropping it. Then while that is still held on my left needle, I'm going to come over here and knit the next stitch and slide both the held stitch and the one we just knit off the needle at the same time. So I'm going to continue working the suspended bind off all the way across my row until I have bound off all the stitches in my project. All right, so I'm down to those last two stitches. I have knit through the very last one. And so what I'm going to do is pass the first stitch over the second one. I have one loop left. And I'm gonna cut the yarn, leaving a tail. And I'm just going to pull the loop on the needle until it comes out to tie off and give it a little tug. So that is basically the end of my afghan. All I have left to do is weave in the yarn tails and block the finished afghan. Now with afghans, some people don't feel like it's necessary to block them, 
but my preference is typically to block everything. So what I'm going to do, since this yarn is machine washable and dryable, check your label, your yarn label, to see what it says about the yarn you're using. But this says machine wash, tumble dry low. So what I'm going to do is machine wash and tumble dry on low to block this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and weave in my yarn tails and then wash and dry my afghan. But I am super happy with how this has turned out. The texture of it is really soft and stretchy and drapey. And I love how all of the colors blend together. And basically what happens with an afghan like this is that there are no two stripes that are identical because of the way that everything stripes together and the difference in where the stripes break compared to um, on another stripe where the same two colors are together where uh, the stripe breaks and goes to the next color. So this is definitely my new favorite way to deal with self-striping yarns, to blend them all together in a project like this. And this is a pretty decent sized lap or throw afghan. I would love to see how this would turn out if you were to use the other five shades or, or colorways of Brava Stripe, which are all neutral. So maybe someday I'll give that a try, but this would also be beautiful in neutral colors as well. And I am really happy with how this turned out. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.